Bob Pushiva. Thank you for uh, coming to Songcraft. First time? Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I couldn't help but notice. The first thing I noticed, I think everyone does, an amazing picking style. Just Thank amazing. You. Thank you very much. Um, w how did that develop for you, or um, what led you to play that way? Um, well, when I think it was around 2006 or something, the, the acoustic guitarist Andy McKee, who's gotten a lot of popularity on YouTube now, um, uh, he, when he came out with those YouTube videos where he was using the guitar as like a drum and um, doing all this crazy stuff, and that's the first time I, I really saw how cool finger picking could be. Sure. Finger picking just using fingers to pick. Uh -huh. I mean, because that's an old technique um, yeah. using a lot of different cultures, but um, but that's when I got interested in it. So I, I had an acoustic guitar, and I, I kind of just wanted to try it. I didn't think I'd be able to do it, and I'm not nearly as good as him, but I, uh, that's something that's always interested me, uh, the, the idea of not using a pick at all, but still being able to make like a full sound. But, you know, also, local to uh, western Pennsylvania, I've noticed a lot of uh, young guitarists, um, like uh, Caleb Lovely, also plays with a rhythmic uh, a kind of development, almost as if you don't needed the drummer, you know, along yeah. with, with that style of, of picking. So that's really incredible. Yeah, I, I mean, I really like the idea of being um, able to just use the guitar only uh, as the only instrument, like in all my recordings, uh -huh. um, except one where I added drums just for the fun of it. But in every one of them, it's just one track of guitar because I like the idea of adding multiple melodies and harmonies and, and one with one line and, and kind of keeping a little bit of a beat too. And that's, some, that's, a, that's a skill I'm still developing, but. There's a bit of a jazz element to it, to also. Are you yeah, I can see that. at all uh, influenced by any of the jazz I, I wouldn't say guitars? I'm, uh, super directly influenced, but yeah. I, I do like um, jazz a lot. And I mean, uh, every once in a while, I'll, I'll get in the mood to listen to jazz. And so I'll listen to, like, for jazz guitar, listening to stuff like uh, Pat Metheny and George yeah. Benson, because that's just the big names. But sure. I'm, I'm a big fan of free jazz, like Ornette Coleman and like wow. later uh, era of Miles Davis, like in... Um, kind of when he got yeah, in the nice. 70s where it got trippier, but, uh, but still, like, a lot of stuff like that, I can draw influences from a lot. That'd be great. I mean, if, if you enter a jam doing what you do the way you do it uh, around here, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because I, I'm always trying to uh, incorporate more of a, a jazz feeling to the, the jams that go on. Definitely. You know? So you, you should definitely. sit in on one of the jams sometimes. Yeah, definitely. Help definitely. get that kind of feeling to it. Yeah. Um, also, uh, well, you, you have something to say about your, your process. For, for writing your tunes, right? Um, is there anything? Um, well, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, there's a lot of different things that go into it. For um, each song, there's usually a different kind of theme. So there's not words to reflect yeah. what I'm talking about, but it's kind of, it's the emotions go through music. So like some songs I write have been uh, for things that are happening in my life or just uh, reflections on prayer or, or stuff like that. Um, a good number of the songs are written for friends of mine who've gone through stuff, whether it be good or, or bad. It's just kind of, I hear about it and I start, I'll start writing something because that's kind of a therapeutic thing for me. Well, that brings us to the titles. Right mm -hmm. now, the, the last one, a really great tune, Important. Um, uh, why did you give it that title? Because that, well, I mean, when I was writing that song, that was, um, that was kind of, all my songs never, barely ever like wrote them in one day. They're always kind of like come together in a few weeks. It's a little problematic, but uh -huh. uh, that song was just, I, I didn't know what to name it because it was just a lot of important things that are on my mind. Um, maybe things that were really kind of unimportant too, uh, just stuff, stupid stuff like girls and uh, school, but then other stuff that was more important, like you know mm -hmm. things that are happening in my future, um, things that were deeper, and, and so it's just it was kind of a vague collection of everything I was thinking at the time. So oh, I just okay. thought important. Slideshow, uh, was there anything in particular? Actually, slideshow that was named because um, I, the idea first came for that because um, I have a, oh, I'm sorry, yeah. a family friend of ours uh -huh. uh, uses has a, a kind of a small business she does where she makes slideshows of people's um, like family photos oh, okay. and she wanted music to set to it for like a DVD. Yeah. Um, and so I, I wrote that song to go with it, but then, and I was kind of thinking that would just be a, a quick little thing, but I kind of ended up liking it. So I've, I've used it for, um, sure. Yeah. That's a, that's a good rule to follow, whatever the function is of the mm -hmm. song. Yeah. Eventually. I mean, um, have you ever written one and just say, uh, um, uh, e minor composition or like the composers, you know. It's, uh, I mean, I usually I go within a certain key, but I've never really kind of. I Symphony guess I number one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I never really thought about it that way, but I mean, could, there's, could do that, there's yeah. a potential for it. Definitely. Yeah. Well, um, you have another song to do for us. Um, what, what's the title of it? And uh, um, the last song I'm going to do is called For Logan. 
Poor Logan. Um, because it was uh, for a good friend of mine whose name was Logan, obviously, but uh, his father passed away a few months ago, and so that was that was kind of hard to see because he was oh, always okay. really um, happy, go lucky kind of guy. Always had like a really positive mental attitude, and so it was always good to see him. And it was kind of hard to see that happen to him. So I've, well, that's interesting. That was, you, you, you have music that has a function for someone you know. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, mm -hmm. great. Hope so. um, Thank you again for, for coming and get to your song for Logan. Cool. Bob Pushiva. Yep, Pushiva. I got it. Okay. Thank you.